Hello again, Gary Stearman, time for another Prophecy in the News Daily Update. It's Monday, the 17th of September, and I'm very pleased to be back after a week of vacation. It was a sort of a working vacation, and you'll see some of the fruit of that in days to come, but it was also a great time to uh, get the batteries recharged. And of course, I was watching the news, as were you all, <clears throat> and uh, things, of course, are happening in the Middle East uh, along prescribed lines. Today, the 17th of September, is the first day of Rosh Hashanah, uh, the Jewish New Year, the civil New Year. <clears throat> and of course, the Bible speaks about this day, uh, which kicks off the 10 days of awe, culminating in Yom Kippur. <clears throat> I'm reading from Leviticus 23, 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, uh, we have uh, Rosh Hashanah. We have the head of the new year. It is the dawning of the Jewish New Year, and the Bible refers to it as the Feast of Trumpets, or as the, the, uh, the uh, Feast of Blowing, a convocation of blowing of trumpets. Uh, the trumpets are blown in such a way as to strike fear into the heart of the listener. Uh, and in synagogues around the world, of course, uh, last night, the trumpet was sounded, and it was sounded in a particular way. There are three trumpet blasts, uh, a, one long blast called a tekiah, and you've all heard that uh, ear-splitting, bone-chilling sound of the tekiah. That's followed by three short blasts called shevarim, and that would be followed by teruah, uh, nine short staccato blasts of the trumpet. Up, 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 very quickly done. And when you put all these trumpet blasts together <clears throat> in the traditional manner, it produces a very complex pattern uh, of 100 blasts of the trumpet. Uh, this is the traditional number of trumpet blasts uh, that should be sounded. <clears throat> and the result is to strike fear and awe into the heart of every listener. Of course, these are the days of awe. They are the days of consideration. They are the days when the world looks at judgment because the entire Old Testament is built around the prophetic premise of the day of the Lord, the coming judgment. And so uh, you have in the civil new year of the Jews, judgment day coming. In, and in that, uh, in that incredible blast of the trumpet, uh, the traditional liturgy of the Festival of Trumpets is built around the opening of the books of life in judgment. And so we have the theme of, of Judgment Day, uh, some, of the, some of the greetings that, that Jews uh, give to each other on this day would be uh, a good year to you, Shana Tova, or Lashana Tova Tika Tevu, may you be inscribed for a good year year, and the implication is maybe you be inscribed for a good year in the Book of Life, or they might say, Lashana Tova u Mechta Tikatevu, may you be inscribed for a good and a sweet year. Uh, words to the, greetings to this effect are given from one Jew to another, but don't miss the idea of the Book of Life, because the Book of Life is intimately associated with Judgment Day. And so what we have today is the sound of the trumpet in all the synagogues of the world, reminding the Jews that Judgment Day could come at any time, but might come even today. And given what's happening right now in the Middle East, and we don't have <clears throat> too much time to go into the details, we'll do that uh, tomorrow and in the days following in this week. We have an armada of warships gathering in the Persian Gulf at this time. Now the Persian Gulf, the, at the northern end of the Persian Gulf, you find Iraq and 
Kuwait and Bahrain. And then as you come south, you come through Riyadh and Qatar and uh, the United Arab Emirates and Oman. All of these oil producing countries lie around the, uh, Gulf, the Persian Gulf. And in my opinion, the Lord <clears throat> has done a wondrous thing for the latter days by <laughs> concentrating oil, uh, the stuff of energy, in that area because he's created a dramatic setting in which to work out the details of the coming judgment. Of course, on the east side of the Persian Gulf, uh, you find Iran and Pakistan and Afghanistan. And so you have Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan to the north, Iraq, uh, and then Saudi Arabia and all the countries of Saudi Arabia uh, lying on the west side of the Persian Gulf, and then a 21-mile uh, inlet to the Persian Gulf which is called the Strait of Hormuz, is being zealously guarded by carrier task force groups, nuclear submarines, guided missile cruisers, Air Force jets. Uh, we have uh, E-3A observation aircraft in the air 24-7. Why? Well, for this very simple reason, <clears throat> that Benjamin Netanyahu has said that Iran is very, very close to developing its nuclear capability. And he has also said that we must nip that in the bud and we only have perhaps as few as 30 days to do it in order to stop Iran from the final completion of uh, its nuclear arsenal. And uh, words to the effect that if we allow this to go on much longer, even Israel won't be able to stop Iran because they will be so well fortified that they'll be able to resist any attack. And so you have Benjamin Netanyahu making sounds like Israel wants to invade Iran. You have uh, the Iranian uh, situation in which they are going full speed ahead to develop their nuclear weapons. And between them, the Persian Gulf and this massive armada that's being uh, built up and fortified even as we speak, day by day by day. Uh, more firepower in the Persian Gulf than was dreamed of in the entirety of World War II. And it could go off in a millisecond. And so we consider the first day of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, the time of considering judgment, the, the time of considering uh, the coming day of the Lord, the days of awe culminating in Yom Kippur, the holiest, the most sacred day of the Jewish calendar. <clears throat> and it corresponds, of course, to the coming of the Lord, when he shall come and every eye shall see him and they will bow down before him. And it will be a time <coughs> of recognition at last uh, of the millennia of having ignored the open and the honest truth that the Lord is alive and well and doing work in the world. And one day, every eye shall see him. So on this Rosh Hashanah, with things happening as they are in the Mideast, not only in the Persian Gulf, but of course uh, in Benghazi, in, in Libya, in uh, and among the Muslim Brotherhood uh, in Egypt, uh, and other places, and of course in Syria, uh, as all of these flashpoints develop day by day, uh, we stand here on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, and we say, even so, <laughs> come soon, Lord Jesus. It's good to be back. See you tomorrow. Keep looking up. I'm Gary Stewart.